Hi again. Uh, here we are talking about JavaScript and uh, working on this shopping cart project. And uh, you know, in the last video, we we use this add to cart function to add items to the cart. And here we're testing it. We've added a few items to the cart. I removed the log messages here. Um, and the next step, what I'd like to do is I'd like to remove items from the cart. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this you know, remove item from cart into a function. And so, you know, I put the keyword function in front, and then we'll put a curly bracket on the end here, and then another closing curly bracket here. Okay, so there's my, my two curly brackets. And uh, this function is going to remove one item from the cart. And it's going to remove the item by looking up the name of that item. Okay, so it's not going to remove all the items, it's just going to remove one. So the idea is, you know, if you had three items in the cart of a with a particular name, it'll, you know, decrement that so that you'll have two items, right? And then if you did it again, it, you'd have one item, and then you'd get to zero, right? Okay. We'll use this function here, remove item from cart all, to remove, um, you know, all of a particular item, okay? Um, you know, this way, like, we could have a button that, increments or decrements the how many items you have of a, you know of a particular name in the cart right um, and then if you want to remove them all we can use this other function okay so how are we going to do this well what we'll need to do is we'll need to search through our array for an item with with the name right so we're going to pass the name to the function and then we're going to loop here so I'll do four you know parentheses curly brackets and then we'll do var i in and you know essentially I'm going to do the same thing that we did up here right for var i in cart right and then we're going to look at the item name in the cart so we'll say if and here we've got the if statement and we'll say if cart bracket i dot name equals name right then we'll do the code in this code block here okay um, so there you go, right? If, you know, this value equals this other value, then, you know, do some code here. Now, this triple equal sign might look a little weird to people. Let's talk about that just for a minute, okay? In JavaScript, when you use the single equal sign, it's the assignment operator. So, in other words, um, you know, if you say A equals 10, then A now has a value of 10, if I were to say, you know, cart dot i or cart bracket i dot name equals name, then the name value of the item in the cart would be set to the name value that you passed into the function. Okay, so we would be changing the value or changing the names of items in the cart. Okay. Um, I think this would evaluate to true, so it would actually just change the first name of the item in the cart, and then it would loop and do the next one, and then change the next one. So essentially, if we pass the name in, it, it could rename every item into the in the cart to the name that you passed here, and that would be an error, right? So we use the double equal sign. So the double equal sign is comparison. This means like, hey, are these two things equivalent? You know, for example, if you said, you know, is three equal to 3, and if it is, then this is true, okay? The thing about the, the double equal versus the, the triple equal is that the double equal compares um, two values, and, you know, it looks at this as the same because these are, are you know, they're very similar, right? This is a 3, and that's a 3. Um, the double equal doesn't care about the type, though, Okay? So this is a string because it's got the quotation marks around it, and this is a number because there's no quotation marks and the character is a number, right? So, you know, the double equal sign would see that these were the same, okay? Um, and so it would say true there, but for us, that might not be the case, right? In programming, like a number is different than a string, and, you know, we don't want to equate those sometimes, so usually it's safer to use the triple equal. And when we're using the triple equal, this would evaluate to false. And the reason this would be false is because this is a string, and this is a number, 
and these are two different types. So the triple equal says that um, the value on the left and the right are the same value and the same type. Okay? So there's a little quick introduction to the, the equal sign there. Okay? Um, and there's more to it. I think there's even a, a quadruple equal. Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, so there we go. There's our there's our quick uh, quick introduction to the equal sign and double equal and single equal, right? So anyway, so we're looping through our cart. We're matching up the names, and when we find one that matches, right? What we're going to do is we're going to say cart bracket i dot count minus minus. Okay, and this means subtract one. Okay, so subtract one from the value here. That's kind of like saying, you know, um, like we could write this the long way. We could say cart i dot count equals uh, cart i dot count minus one. Right. So here we're setting the value of of the count right using the single equal, so we're set assigning a value, and then here we're assigning it to the current value minus one, okay? And you could shorten this one to, um, to this. This means, you know, self minus this value, right? And there's a, a plus equivalent, so you could do, you know, plus equals, right? I think we did that up here, right? So, uh, so anyway, so we're, you know, this, this, you know, minus minus is the equivalent of what we have here, you know, because people often subtract one, and there's a plus plus too. That means add one. So, um, you know, this just means subtract one, okay? So once we've subtracted one, um, then maybe we want to, uh, you know, stop looping, right? So we could put a break in there, and that should quit the, uh, quit the loop, okay? You know, I mean, if we, we should only have one of each of these items, they should always be unique, right? So, you know, if we found that particular name in the cart, there should only be one of that name, and so there's no reason to loop onward, right? Let's give it a test. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to console log, and we'll log the cart, okay? And actually, you know, the apple is at position zero, okay? So... Let's get the count of the apple there. Oops, I got to put the dot in. <clears throat> and so this, you know, we've added all these items to the cart. And then we log the cart. Okay. And it should have five apples. So we got one, two, and three more makes five. Now let's remove an apple from the cart. Okay, so we'll remove a name. And we have to be careful with the spelling. Like the name here will have to match exactly the spelling that we used up here, right? Because a lowercase apple would be a different kind of apple, right? Um, and so now that we've removed an apple from the cart, let's, uh, let's get the count again, right? So we'll, we should see the count of apples here. It should be five, and then we should remove one, and then it should be four, right? Let's take a look. So I'll refresh here, and then I get five apples, and then I get four. So that's kind of working, right? Um, what if we removed, you know, a few more apples? What if I said, you know, um, let's remove like three apples, right? So here we, I, I got the count, should be five, and then I'm going to remove the apple three times, and then I should have two. Let's give that a test. Oh, so I got five and two, so that works pretty good, right? What if we did it again? What if I removed like six apples from the cart or more, right? Um, let's see what happens here. Oh, negative two apples. Well, that's kind of a problem, right? Um, so, you know, our function is working pretty good. It just doesn't take into account for some situations. Like if the count is, get, is, is zero or less, then we, we kind of have a problem, right? So uh, let's, let's give that a test or let's give that a, a, like a, a fix. Like what can we do? Okay, so if we, you know, subtract one here, maybe we should also check, and we'll throw in another if statement here, right? And we'll say, hey, you know, if cart bracket i dot um, 
count is, you know, um, equal to zero, right? And we should do triple equals there, right? Okay, so if it's equal to zero, then we want to do some code here, right, where we remove that item from the cart. Because we don't want to have an item, you know, the name, we don't want the name to appear in the cart if there's zero items, right? So uh, so we'll do this, right? And we'll say like, uh, so to remove an item from the cart, what we're going to use is we're going to use splice. So we're going to say, you know, cart dot splice. And it's a little, maybe a little hard to read here, but it, Splice takes three arguments. So the first is the position. And for us, our item is at item I, right? And then the second one is the, the, the number that you're going to remove, okay? So what I want to do is I want to Splice at this position. And Splice also lets you add new items, so it does more than what I'm doing here, but essentially we can use this to remove items from the cart or remove items from an array. So we have an array, we'll name the position that we want to remove, and then we'll say how many items we want to remove at that position. So if this was like zero, then we would remove the first item from the cart, okay? And if you put two here, it would remove the first and the second item, okay? So uh, here we'll remove the item from the cart there. Let's give it a try. So um, let's, uh, this one will be a little harder to test here. Um, maybe at the end here we'll just, um, we'll just, we, we need to make a, you know, I'll, maybe I'll do this in the next one is really to get, get good tests out of this. We'll have to have a, a system that prints the entire cart out so we can look at it in detail, right? Using the console is maybe um, in this way is, is, not giving us enough detail. So I'll just log the entire cart when we're done. So here we are, and I'll refresh, and you can see we had five apples, but now we only have one item in the cart, and it's the pear, right? So the apple is completely removed. So what happened there was, you know, we removed, we added five apples, we got the count, and then we removed one, two, three, four, five apples. And as that counted down, when count got to zero, it removed the apple from the cart entirely. And then when we tried to remove the apple a second, you know, a, you know, a sixth and a seventh time, you know, that didn't even exist here. So it couldn't find the name. And so, you know, nothing happened, right? But anyway, there's, there's, our, there's our remove item from cart, right? So that's kind of working and it kind of takes care of the situation where we might get negative items, right? And you know, you might modify this and add some more features, but this is kind of getting us in the ballpark of what we want, and it's showing how the array works, right? So here we can loop through every item in the array, look for objects with property names, right? Because each item in our array is an object. And then we can, um, you know, splice from the array to remove an item from the array. And this is kind of a a, a very useful little thing to know about, right? So splice, so if you want to add or remove items from an array, you can use splice. Push to just add one to the end, splice to, you know, remove a number of items, and then actually you can add more items on the end here um, if you want also with splice. So anyway, so I hope that's useful to you guys. You can try that out and test it for yourself.